Hey, what's up to the point listeners? This is a PSA, super important, so stay with me. Uh, quick shout out to one of our avid listeners. I know he was a big fan of the podcast who recently passed away, Joe Girolami uh, from Border Plumbing, Heating, and Electrical up in uh, Kelowna, British Columbia, up in Canada. Uh, man, super sad to hear that Heard that news to such a great human being, so, so rest in peace, Joe. And also just another quick shout out um, to Ben Davis from Express Plumbing up in Idaho who's been really sick, kind of been offline a little bit. I'm also an avid listener, customer of ours, good friend. Uh, so just feel free to reach out to him in, on social media and give him a, a little words of encouragement because he could use it. Okay, and now moving on to Rhino X. It's finally opening up to the public. Listen to this lineup. Goodrich, Leland, Smith, Dave Geiger, Terry Nicholson, Ken Haynes, all of them back and come and speak. But we also got my man Paul Kelly, Chad Peterman, Ishmael Valdez, Chris Hoffman, and George Donaldson. And then we also have the Q&A with the Any Hour Group guys, Wyatt and his crew, which is going to be fantastic. But we got a fantastic concert from Nelly. We have Howard Bihar, former president of Starbucks. That's going to be awesome. And then still a surprise keynote speaker. Ooh, I wonder who it's going to be. Huh? You'll find out if you're going to actually be there. So we will have eight general admission tickets go available, which, by the way, when I say general admission, it's not the same general mission you're thinking of. Like, you're in the shit. You're in the mix. But we have two VIP tickets left that you can join the uh, legend speakers. That'd be good, Rich and Leland and Dave and Terry uh, and Ken at a VIP dinner the night before. Um, it's about a three-hour shindig with all of us working or hanging out together. So it's a good time. But that's going on uh, on the market officially in about the next week. So be watching out on the Rhino and to the point uh, Facebook pages. And last, this particular podcast is brought to you by Profit Rocket Growth Summit, which is where I was at on October 22nd up in Las Vegas doing a live podcast from the stage with Ishmael Valdez from Next Gen, my friend Tommy Mello, as well as the man that put the event on, Mr. Victor Rancor. So I hope you enjoy this. I have my work cut out for me. You tell me if you think I passed or failed. This is To The Point, a Rhino experience, voted one of the top home services marketing and operations podcasts, cutting through the bullshit and getting to the point. Hey, what's up? It's your boy, the host of To The Point Home Services Podcast, Chris Yano, also the CEO of Rhino Strategic Solutions, a digital marketing company for the trade since 2008, 15 years in this game. And I got some great friends sitting up here with me and I'm excited to get into it. Now, when we talked about doing this and we talked about having the topic of recession and inflation, I was like, all right, you guys understand the task I have up here with these three fuckers sitting with me, right? If I get through three questions, we'll be lucky. So I'm going to try and keep them on track. I can't, yeah. Between these two over here, it's going to be quite the test. So, um, but I do want to get into it because we, the topic of this is recession and inflation. It's a celebration. Now, what the hell is that a celebration for? It's kind of like when somebody I know to my left made a very controversial post in a Facebook <laughs> group. Something about memberships are dead. What the they hell are. was that all about, Ishmael? They need CPR, that's why. <laughs> so recession inflation, it's a celebration. Here's the point of that, is everybody's dealing with it, so what are you doing to be successful in it? That's the point of this whole thing, right? Because there's a majority of you in this room that won't do anything about it. You guys ever hear what, what uh, Ish says whenever he talks about uh, how, to, how to recruit people? What do you got to do? Pay them more. Just pay them more. That's what he always <laughs> says. Pay more. Pay more. So I want to make sure I understand. When you say pay more, how are you doing that with recession and inflation, like a pending recession, but all this inflation? How the hell are you paying more, man, and still making money? Look, it, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible because I'm probably the dumbest one up here. And, I, and I'm going to try to use single-syllable words because I don't know anything better. Okay? So... Look, it, it's super simple, right? The way you pay more, it doesn't come out of your pocket, right? You charge more. 
And the, the, the difference between the people that are paying more in yourself is that they have no fear of charging more. The fear of you charging more is what's keeping you from paying more, which is keeping you from making more. It's, a, it, 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 it's, like, a, it's like a domino effect, right? The fear of you charging more is keeping you from paying more, which is keep, keeping you from making more, okay? And I'm going to give you the best example and the best advice I've gotten three days ago or a week ago at Tommy's event. I heard it for the first time. Whatever you feel comfortable charging, add $5,000. <laughs> because every $5,000 hey, counts. Ken Goodrich said that shit to me, and I'm like, if you would have told me that shit five years ago when I started, six years ago when I started Next Gen, dude, dude I was charging $6,000 for a changeout. $6,000 for, for an air conditioning changeout, right? If he would have told me, hey, I, that's where I feel comfortable because that's where my competition was at or what I thought my competition was at, right? If he would have told me that, hey, I know you feel comfortable charging six, seven thousand, just add a five to it. <laughs> that was the best advice. And, and when, when, I, when I heard that, it was, it was, it was mind-changing to me because if I can charge more, then I could pay more, right? Anybody else? Come on. Yeah, so I get this all the time. I, I made a post about a month ago, and I said, I charge, I charge $1,000 for a run capacitor. And everybody went fucking crazy. How do you charge $1,000 for a run capacitor? Don't you get bad reviews all the time? How much does a run capacitor cost? Okay, so do you think that same customer that you're charging $400 is going to complain just as much as a $1,000 customer? They are. And guess what? When I told my guys I'm raising the price to $1,000, they said, fuck yeah, we just got to raise. And that's the mentality of my business is that when I raise the prices, that means my employees are getting more money. I got guys that are sitting in this room that were making living off welfare in December are now making $30,000 a month because they made a decision that they deserve to make more money. And that's how we raise our prices because they want to raise their prices because they deserve to get paid more. Guys, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you the same thing Tommy told you and tell you the same thing that everybody's telling you. That you guys got the fucking message already, okay? You guys got to charge more money. You guys, you guys got to charge more money. Before I let Tommy get on there. Oh, God. Please. Tommy's the richest one up here, by the way. Uh, that's not here or there. Uh, so, look, I'm going to do something that I really haven't done in a while for, 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 for everybody. I, I had a contract written up for me for how, the way I pay in California. And if I could pay in California the way I'm paying, I could pay. You guys could pay it too, right? You guys could pay. It, the legalities behind this contract that I had drafted, I think it costed me like $46,000 to draft up this contract. It's 100% legal in California. I'm sure you guys could use it. Um, go on Service Avengers, DM me your freaking e your email address. I'm going to give you that, that pay contract for the technicians, for the sales guys, for the installers, the way we pay, the way we bonus them, and the way we hold them accountable. Okay? So go on Service Avengers, DM me your email address. Let's hear I'm, I'm serious. That. That fucking, that contract alone is worth whatever you guys paid for these seats. That contract alone is worth whatever you guys paid for these seats. So DM me your email address. I'm going to send you an email with our contract that we use because I don't care what you guys think. I pay more than you guys. And that's why everybody wants to work at Next Gen. All I'll say is um, most of us, we go into a market. We figure out what everybody else is charging. We go a little bit less, give a little bit more. What you need to do, and this is, this is really when you get a great person in your finance department, is add up all your bills. And this is an exercise that's done through either QuickBooks, we use Intact. And then figure out what you need to make. We want to make 25%, so that's how we price. We took historical data. Rather than wishing that we make a profit, we do it on a calculated, we adjust our price book to make our profit. See, most of us, we just don't have any clue on how to price. And then we teach our technicians, yes, I got a technician that's going to make 380 grand this year. Yes, most of my technicians make six figures in their first year. But forget about that, that it's all performance pay. So it's easy. All I look for is a guy that smiles a lot. He can tell a great story. Firm handshake, he stares at me in the eyes, and he wants, and he's humble. He wants to learn. He's ready to be coached. Those are the people that I attract. And guess what? 60% of our people that come through are from referrals. So 
I don't want to. I, I could talk all day. Chris knows that. That's why. That's why he wants me to shut up. <laughs> I didn't say anything. So you talked about, you know, you, maybe you don't know how to set the right, the right price. How do you find out what the right pricing is? You don't just look at your competitors, right? You're not trying to price yourself off what your competition is hey, doing. I, I, can I, let me get two minutes of this. Like 90% of you guys aren't accountants. They're, you're not controllers. You're not financial advisors. You're not CFOs, okay? That is the one mistake I made from year one to year three. I was running a $32 million yes, business. Yes, pay 32. attention to this. $32 million business, okay? And everybody has a cap in this room, okay? You guys are going to find where, where you cap off where you can't even grow no more. It's not that you're doing something wrong or some, or so, like It's not. It's that you're capping off. I capped off at $32 million. I didn't have a fucking controller. I didn't have a CFO. I didn't have an accounting team. I had a bookkeeper running a $32 million company, okay? And these smart people, like yourselves, came to me and said, hey, uh, what's your gross profit? I'm like, what's the gross profit? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Howard. That was three True years story. ago. That was three years ago. For four years ago, you would ask me what my my overhead was, my my marketing percentage, my average ticket. Like I didn't know shit. I still don't know shit. I just just act like I do. Okay. But the one mistake I make, and the one mistake you guys are making too. You know why? Because every single one of you has came up to me and said, "Hey Ishmael, can I take a picture with you? Ishmael, can I can I have one question with you? Ishmael, can I spend five minutes with you? Right?" And I'm like, "Yes, that's why I'm here." Okay. The one mistake you guys are all making, you guys don't have a financial controller to structure a PL, to structure a balance sheet. You guys don't have that. So when people ask you that, and let me tell you how I know. Because I ask you a question and it doesn't make sense. What's your gross profit? 78%. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what, is that? what does that even mean? Well, oh, Ishmael, my net, my net profit is 42%. Okay. <laughs> like, the one mistake I made... Went from zero to 32, I could have been super fucking profitable. I was single low digit profits for three years because I didn't know any better. Nobody Look. sat down with me until Tom Howard came to my shop, sat down with me and educated me on financials. Okay. Get a fucking controller tomorrow. If you are running a four, five, six, seven million dollar co company, which you are, right? 90% of you guys go on Indeed, go on ZipRecruiter, put all the th qualifications if you need that. I will email you that too. All the descriptions that we used when we were looking for a controller, I'll email you, you that too. So you guys could hire a controller and actually know how to manage and, and, and grow a business. I'll go real quick. So you can get a fractional CFO for four hours a week and they get paid a million dollars a year. They're going to change your business. They'll go to build, billpay.com. You'll start using Expensify every time you get a receipt. Here's the real deal. I got a... I got a CFO that made, I gave him the equity incentive because he's got equity in the company. He's motivated and I got yep. the best of the best, right? You guys see how I use that? We talked about it earlier. Well, now he, let me tell you something else. He goes, Tommy, first three months on, first of all, he got audited financials. You know how hard it is to get audited financials? I we do. did that. I do. Okay. So <laughs> that's one of the things we did. Then he said, we're not expensing this. We're not doing this. I'm going to save you a million dollars in taxes. Then he said, you know that you're discounting 18% on average? We're going to put a cap at 7%. I gained another 10%. Hey, Tommy, say that again. Say that again. He Nobody put a cap. tracks average discount. He put, again, a cap. he put a cap on average discount. He, we were at 18. He maxed it at 7. So now you got to call a manager to get more than 7. Do you know what that added to the bottom line? And then we said, he walked into my office. This is nuts. Seven weeks ago, he walked into my office. He goes, we can do a mobile transaction fee. And I said, okay, I called Service Titan. I said, we're also going to charge a shop fee, 2.5%. He, he came into my office this past week. He said, you know what that did, Tommy? And I said, I think I calculated it. Tell me if I'm right. He said, we just added $6.5 million to the bottom line of EBITDA. $6.5 million six weeks ago. This is what a CFO does. All I wanted to say, that's the power of it. You guys it. are not, uh, most of you guys are not at a CFO level. You guys probably there between 20, 25, 30 million. Right now that you guys are at four, five, six, seven million, which is 90% of you guys, go fucking hire a controller. If there's nothing, Tommy, Tommy and I are going to go around in circles. If there's one thing that you're going to go to back and do, do it right now. Go on fucking Indeed Zip Recruiter and, and hire a controller. Pay him 90, 100, 110, whatever, and bonus him off so he can start uh, incentivizing you. I mean, so he could start producing more profit for you guys. 
I think that these most of these guys in here aren't that big. So this is probably going over most of your head. Would you agree? It's going over a lot of your guys' head. So one of the things you want to do is, and this is a big failure in most businesses, what do we do when we first start out? We go hire someone else to do financials. We go fucking sub it out. We don't learn about financials. I think everybody in this room, before you go hire all these people, because most of you guys can't afford it, start understanding how to read a balance sheet, how to read a P&L, how to set up your chart of accounts. This is the stuff you guys need to focus on and stop pawning it off to fucking other people. Because once you know your numbers, then you have power. Then guess what? As you start scaling, you can start adding these positions. But stop pawning shit off to other people. Stop saying my CFO is my accountant's going to get my money. My accountant's going to get the numbers. No, these are the fucking numbers. You need to get them. You know how to read that shit yourself. That's when you get power. That's what we teach at Profit Rocket. That's what our blueprint is. We're going to give you the power to understand your financials so you're not at the, in the mercy of somebody else. Because who in here has been screwed over by an accountant? Who in here gets accurate financials every month? Who in here doesn't even fucking know if their, their financials are accurate? Because most businesses that we go into, we go into it in day one, these guys are telling me, oh, we're making 50% uh, net profit. We start going through the P&L, we're like, dude, you're barely making 2%. And then all of a sudden they're like, I'm firing my CFO, I'm firing this. I'm like, dude, the, the problem is, is you don't know how to read your own financials and you're blaming other fucking people. Grab this by the balls and stop blaming other fucking people. Okay. There you go. So to This is the best panel in the fucking industry. So to industry, sum by the up way. my question that they all kind of went this way. See, I told you I had my work cut out for me. It was like, hey, how do you know how to set your pricing? Apparently, you got to get a fractional CFO. You got to make sure you know talk about real shit. Gotta... They want to talk about real shit. That's why. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So, hey, to bring this thing all back together, yeah, you got to know your numbers, know how to price, right? Because you're not pricing based off your competition. And you if you want to pay more, you got to know your numbers. 100%. Same thing inside the, the Profit Rocket Blueprint. I'll give you an exact diagram, an exact spreadsheet. You plug in the numbers. They'll tell you exactly what you need to charge to start making money today. You decide your, what your gross profit's gonna be. You set it up and it's in there, it's super easy to do. Um, like I said, I'm literally taking Michelle's brain and fucking put it into a thing so you guys have it at your fingertips and none of you guys even fucking signed up. That's how I know you're not fucking serious. I made it so fucking cheap. Sweet, take advantage of that. Yeah. Nice. You gotta know your numbers. So it took me a long time too. I mean, I've been in business 15 years and uh, my wife is our COO. Early on, you know how it is. You wear like many, many hats. She oh, was yeah. our COO, CFO, all these things. And so I, it took me a long time to really understand my numbers, and I was embarrassed about it. Um, and you know, so it's not easy for everybody to, to know those things. So I found a way that uh, I could understand the, the, a scorecard that I could understand that made sense to me and my skill level. So um, I like to try to be able to give you guys something that, you know, part of this podcast is to get to the point, um, which I rarely do. These guys rarely get to the point quickly but incredible education. And something I, I like to do is they also negotiate a lot of things with their manufacturers, with the OEMs. And something that we had um, at Rhino X last year, which is an event that we put on you know, every year, I think with the Spear third one coming up, is we had on um, a, a few guys and they were talking about how you can negotiate with the manufacturers because ultimately that can affect your pricing and your profitability, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and there are a lot more levers than you even think you know to be able to man to be able to negotiate with them, and you had never have had more leverage than you do right now. Is that right? And I'm I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what my my deal is because nobody in this room, not even Victor, nobody has a fucking better deal than the next gen. Okay, we're getting 24 percent rebate on every piece of equipment that we buy. 24 percent rebate. So, hey, wait, you know how, how I worked it out? How did you get to that? Out? Ready for this? Hey. Uh, Goodman, come over here. Hey, Amanda, uh, come over here. Hey, Glennox, come over here. These are three major brands. I, I got all the brands. I brought, brought them in. We sat them down, right? And I told them exactly what I was going to do, okay? So I wasn't like, hey, what's the best you could do for me? Like, hey, this is what I'm going to do for you guys, okay? Three, this is through my third month into the business. Uh, by my third month, I'm going to be installing five to ten systems a day for you guys. By my third month, they thought I was crazy, okay? I need you guys to hook me up with a rebate. Oh, Ishmael, the best we do is 10%. Okay, cool. 10% of what? $3 million in equipment, $2 million in equipment, whatever it was at the time. I think it was like one and a half or $2 million. They gave me 2%. And I'm like, hey, so what happens if I sell like, I don't know, $3 million my first year or $4 million or $5 million? I don't know. Maybe we could do 12 or 14 or 16. 
So I made them start putting a scale on, 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 on volume of equipment. And every single year I sat them down and that percentage went up. So, hey, man, you told me, right? We already sat down. The paper says, the contract says that you, that if I buy $2 million worth of equipment, you were going to give me 10% back, okay? I got those $2 million, okay? This year I'm projecting that I'm going to do $5 million. What happens at $5 million? Oh, dude, if you do $5 million, Ishmael, oh, we're going to give you 18%. So look at the same thing. So same thing. I'm, I'm talking big numbers. You guys should be doing the same. Hey, I'm going to buy $500,000 worth of equipment, okay? How much are you guys going to give me back? 8%. Okay, cool. What happens at seven fifty? I don't know. We'll give you like an extra percent. And, and you do that every single year until you scale it up to 24%. 24% is the cap, okay? That's one thing. Now, it's not just grab a rebate and then, you know, they're going to put it back on the pricing. No, it's the rebate and the pricing. So my prices aren't going up and I'm still getting a bigger rebate, okay? So don't let these guys come in here and raise the prices just so they could give you back the rebate. That's stupid, right? So every single year, I make it a priority. You, your controller, your, your, your CEO, whoever it is, whoever's building your budget to sit down with these people, okay? And this is probably one of the biggest relationships you're gonna have in your journey. Okay, so make sure you treat them properly. Make sure you're honest with them. Make sure you're honest with them, right? And every single year have that conversation of, hey, if I can do this for you, what can you do for me? Well, what happens if I go above and beyond that, okay? And always ask for more. Yeah, so, so I'll go two minutes because I really want to get through these questions for Chris. So check this out. So I fly out the CEO of the largest garage drug manufacturer in the world. And he had a basket of gifts. He got a nice bottle of Johnny Walker Blue. And uh, it works. What I told him is, I said, listen, I want you. I said, what's going to do the best for you? Where do you guys make the most money? And he said, what do you mean? I said, I want to be a great partner. What doors do you guys make the most profit on? And he said, this, 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 and this. I said, so here's what we're going to do. Each month, I want you guys to jump on a Zoom call with us, train us how to sell that door. And I want to have a contest with my guys, and we'll start getting my guys in the habit of selling your most profitable doors. And he said, okay, well, your product mix is already the best in the industry. I said, well, let's make it better. I said, I'd love for you to gamify it, get my guys interested, and let's start to build some new, new habits for the guys to sell these type of doors. So, so that's where we started. And then I did exactly what Ishmael did, and I said, give me exactly when I hit these thresholds. But then I asked for a ton of co-op. And I said, allow me to build your brand. Then I asked to be the number one on the store locator wherever we were. And then I asked, so, the, so I had a lot of asks. And then I said, the number genius. one thing for me is that my technicians, my installers get in and out of your distribution center. I don't want them hanging out. You got to take extra care of me. So they've got a separate garage for A1 than everybody else, which is crazy. But one thing that I did do is I asked and I ask, and I ask again. And that l last month, my, my COO came in and he said, what do you want? I said, ask for a free trim and an operator brass bracket for every door we sell like this. And I want $1,000 for who sells the most this week, 500 for the second place, 250 for the third place. And he goes, they won't do that. I go, then I'll call them and I'll get it. He goes, fine, I'll call them. They did it. All you got to do is ask. Yeah, but Keep asking. So Keep asking. This is circling back to these guys have giant businesses. Okay? It doesn't matter if you're a giant business or not. Keep it's, fucking asking. Keep keep I was growing. Doing this keep, keep I was doing this since 2006, 2017. Doesn't matter if you're a giant business or not. When I it was five hundred thousand dollars threshold, they gave me like whatever percentage. It doesn't matter. They will give it to you. The What's in it for one, them? The What's number one them? reason that they have nobody knows about these rebates. Nobody Jeez. knows about these one percent co-ops. They don't. They're not going to come and say, yeah, come and buy from me. I'm going to give you a percentage back. No, they don't do that. Keep asking. It doesn't matter the scale. I know we keep bringing it back. We are a huge company. It doesn't matter the scale. It doesn't matter the numbers. They want your freaking business. Well, if you let me talk. But anyways, so what I was trying to say, they're not, obviously, these are big companies. That, that stuff doesn't matter. But the one thing you have to do is hold them on. Hold them honest, right? So a lot of you guys, you guys get brainwashed into train or I only sell Lennox or I only sell whatever it is. You guys really got to start selling your own brand or whatever. It doesn't matter what equipment it is. You need to go to what's going to make you the most money. Because at the end of the day, you guys all agree most equipment's going to break down anyways. 
right? It's all going to have issues. They're all going to have all these problems, but you got to go with the company that's going to support you. That would be the first thing I had that conversation about. What happens if this thing breaks? Because if they tell you anything other than, hey, I'm going to get that shit taken care of right away, don't do business with them. Next is don't hold yourself to one brand. You have to shop them. You want to make sure that one that's going to take care of you and your, your company, because at the end of the day, that's what matters is making a profit. And if they're not willing to work with you on price, then you need to go switch to somebody else and be willing to. But do not lock yourself into one brand. Just make sure you're always keeping them honest. And as long as they're honest, they got good customer service. Make sure to scratch their back and they'll scratch your back. Yeah, amazing. So so I, I've been dealing, I mean, I've worked with the manufacturers now for 15 years and with a lot, I've been in, sat in a lot of meetings with them and I've heard a lot of negotiations happen with a lot of really, really big companies and some small companies. So yes, you have more leverage when you're a bigger company, like that's not a secret, but you certainly still have leverage if you're small. It's just maybe a little bit less leverage, but why would you still not take advantage of that? The main thing that I take away from what these guys are saying, regardless of the size of the company, is when you're going to go into that conversation with the OEM, with the manufacturer, you got to have your shit together. you got to have an actual legit plan in place that you can share with them confidently to, yeah. that, that gives them confidence to say, okay, yeah, I believe you. And to give you some sort of leverage, you got to have a legit plan in place. And my, my TM's in here, just to let you know, your TM's not your best friend. Okay, they're coming in every time they come in your business, they're trying to get information to use to charge you more money. So when I talk, when you're a smaller company, don't say I'm going to do 3 million this year. Say I'm going to do 300,000 this year, then go hit 2 million. All of a sudden you get a big ass bonus because they will structure your, your uh, incentives off the amount of volume they think you're going to do. I would tell them, I think I'm only going to do 500 grand and they'll give me this big bonus incentive. All of a sudden I go sell 2, two million in equipment. All of a sudden I just won fucking big. They're like, oh shit, I messed up. So That's good. Say keep that, that shit. Again. Say that exact same thing a little bit slower again about that whole incentive thing, what you just did. So when you're starting out, right, they're like, how much equipment do you think you're going to buy this year? I'd like to undershoot myself, but I would set a tier like Ishmael's talking about, set tiers if I hit these extra bonuses. They don't think you're going to hit them because you're like, oh, I probably only sell 300 grand. All of a sudden you go sell a million and you go crush that shit. Now you just made a bunch of money you weren't expecting to make. So Keep your stuff private with your TM. My TM's here. I love you, Matt. But at the end of the day, it's us versus them. You guys got to remember that. He gone. Oh, he gone. He Forget gone. it, Matt. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I love hey. you, Tommy. Tommy loves love. We're here for you guys, not for them, okay? We're here for every single one of you guys, not for them. So, so remember whenever you, you talked about your story when Tom came in and kind of helped you realize what gross profit was, just all the net profit, all those things. Um, we, when you, did he give you any advice um, on, like that you didn't know when you went to go work with the manufacturers, like that would change besides just going, like is there something else that you can do? There's there other levers you can play. Can you get prepaid on stuff? If, if yeah, you, buddy. You guys heard him, uh, who in here does not know what co-op is? Raise your hand. It's totally okay if you don't know what it is. It's hard to see. Um, it's when it's when it's when they give you like an extra half percent percent whatever they do um so you so they could use it for advertising i'm so like controller over my brand that i told them hey that co-op shit doesn't work for me just throw it back into my rebate because i don't want you guys telling me what to do with my brand so they threw that one one and a half percent without the guidelines on it well, and let, they, let and me let me explain it. to you what co-op is because so literally i'm at valpac money mailer i do the mailers i also have a truck that's branded. So a lot of times people will put the brand, well, you know, let's just say for the sake of a lot of air conditioning, they'll put train on the side of their trucks and then they'll get the company trained to pay for it with their co-op dollars or a home show. They'll put train all over. They'll put a train thing out there. Well, the they'll, they'll, train will pay for that home show. Or if I put train really big on one of my mailers, they'll pick up a fourth of the mailer. So it's just a way to get their name out there and give you money back to grow their brand. And that's what they do is they, they want it, they want you to stay loyal to them by putting it all over your marketing. Yep. And and that's I wouldn't beauty. advertise I would I wouldn't advise you guys put your fucking brand on vans because you know they might piss you off one day and you're still running around with train vans. That's one of the mistakes I almost did at the beginning. Dude, just 
your brand is your brand. Don't be putting anybody else's brand in there. Well, Dan uh, will tell you never do that if yeah. he's in here. So, kicks oh, your so that's, your question? that's the beauty of, of Goodman's private label. So private label, if you go through Goodman, they don't they if you, they'll do co-ops, they'll let you do truck wraps, everything. They'll give yep. you the money. You don't have to put their brand on it. So if you guys aren't private labeling, you guys are missing out on an opportunity too. Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Uh, it was a joke. It was a joke. Okay, so look, to answer Chris's question, to answer Chris's question, what else I did to, to, to be able to make more profit, uh, there's this thing called a Capital One Spark Reward Card. It has a 2% money back on every fucking transaction. Uh, I didn't know that shit, okay? 2% back at whatever scale, okay? Victor, God damn it. Whatever scale you're at. A million, five million, ten million, a hundred million dollars. Okay, if you're accumulating those those points and you could log into your login and it tells you how much you're doing, right? What I did is I would wait till after summer when the things were slowing down, and I would, you know, if were, if I if I got up to a hundred thousand, a hundred fifty thousand in points, I would cash them out at, right after summer when shit was about to turn the curve, and I would dump it back into marketing. Right? I'll dump those 150, 200, whatever I could get. I'll dump it back into marketing just so that, that when, when I'm going, you know, 150 miles an hour on, uh, on prime summer, I didn't hit the curve going down too hard. So I, I dumped it back into marketing and, and my, and my curve of, 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 of growth just evened out a little bit more every single time. So 2% back on that cash. There's, I'm sure there's other credit cards too. I don't know which other credit, but when Divi, I learned that 2%. Divi. When I learned that 2% that I could add back into my P&Ls, right, as profit, and when I sold the company, they were, they, I was able to add it back into to the, to the company as EBITDA too. Dude, that was game changer because I think we, this year we're on pace to accumulate a little bit over 720,000 in, in just credit card points. Anybody else? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think what he just talked about too is, did you guys hear what Ishmael said, right? He's rolling that into shoulder season, and that's where we are now. Most of you guys, it's, obviously, it's slowed down, stuff like that. And I think, obviously, having you up here, Chris, and, and setting a reasonable expectation, I think this time of year, you're a digital marketing company, right? You got every company, where's my fucking leads? Where's my leads, Chris? <laughs> Dude, people aren't Googling AC no. repair, furnace repair. So you guys over here, let's talk about omni-channel marketing and what you guys do when it slows down. Because don't blame Chris. If no one's looking for an air conditioning repair, you can't blame the guy. I agree. Look, <laughs> look, so, look, I'm gonna, and this is for air conditioning. Most of you guys are air conditioning guys. Look, when it slows down, stop fucking panicking. It's not just you that's slowing down. Everybody's slowing down. Everybody's slowing down. But what happens is you guys are on Google, on Yelp, and everything. Nobody's searching. Nobody needs it. Nobody needs air service conditioning. Service agreements, you're right. No, Easy. let me tell you something. Okay? Boom. I'm going to bring that up right now. I'm going to bring that up. And I'm going to tell you why memberships are dead. Okay? Let me tell you why. The, the, member, the, the, membership, the membership post, I'll, I'll go through it right now. But let me answer that question about marketing. Okay? <laughs> when, the noise, when, when, the, when the slope goes down, search goes off. So stop calling your marketing company. You guys aren't there. Where's my, I paid 50,000, I paid 5,000, and you guys, there's no leads. This is when direct mail, this is when, when, when radio, this is when the noise works, right? People aren't searching, so we'll find a different avenue. I'm gonna get on that post towards the end of the, of the, of the, of the um, session, because I really want to attack it because what that post meant is going to be super impactful to how we're going to change the way you guys do business. But did you hear what he said? It's, it's, you got to get out in the community. You got to start doing things you don't normally have to do in the summertime, right? Those market, those Google leads are flying in like crazy. When it slows down, you know, we got some of the biggest companies in the country here. I got Wyatt Hemp, Hempworth in the back there. And when I go out to Utah, I see them everywhere. They're in trade shows. They're all over the place. They got billboards. They have a, I would let's go watch a movie and all of a sudden there's an any hour commercial inside the movie theater. So there's, those guys are making noise all the time. And I think it, it's important. So if you have a big company that's still out and doing trade shows, shaking hands, got someone out there in the community, you guys should probably be doing the same thing. I feel like we've gotten so lazy and dependent on digital marketing that people aren't willing to go do the things that are necessary to go get leads. I'll still go knock on doors today if I have to. Are you guys hungry enough? Do you want your business to win enough to go knock on some fucking doors to make shit happen? Can I, can I just talk about marketing for a minute? Sure. So do number one thing is, do you know what attribution models are? Anybody know what attribution means? It means, it means 
every single digital and every single mailer has a tracking phone number, and I know how much that makes me. It's attribution. It's attributed to that marketing source. But this is really, really cool because a lot of people ask me, how do you stay so busy in certain, and that we're not as seasonal as you guys, but I just made a new video, it's awesome, of spiders coming under the garage door. And that's called top of funnel. What I'd be focused on if I were you guys is air quality during this time. There's so many other things you guys could be looking at and you could create demand, higher funnel. And so, I mean, I, I, I will talk about service agreements real quick is because I own that customer. We're lubricating, adjusting, adjusting and tightening everything on the door once a year. Now, I'll just explain one thing is there comes a year where that door is fatigued and it's old and they are using only us. We've got a 92% chance they're gonna use us with a 20% higher ticket without discounting it, uh, just the membership discount. But ultimately, I'll tell you guys, uh, you know, they mentioned omni-channel. If you think Google's not the most important thing in the world, not pay-per-click, but LSA and the Google My Business pages, then you're crazy. Double down on that and double down on organic and get away from pay-per-click. Pay-per-click cost me 24% of revenue. I use it for capacity planning only. Uh, it's expensive, but with Ken Goodrich's story, which Chris has had on plenty of times, when he started going to the Wizard of Ads, got his truck wrapped, and started doing a bunch of radio and TV, he only bid on his own keywords, which means on Google, on pay-per-click, he bid on Gettle terms only. He went from spending $300,000 a month to $20,000 a month with way more work because of that omni-channel approach. And it's something pretty special, and I think it should be discussed. Well, I think you were talking about LSA too. So most of you guys have local service ads, right? You guys know that Google likes information. And one of the big failures of most people with LSA, they're like, why don't I rank higher? Every time a lead comes in, you guys need to be putting that customer's information in there, their name, their phone number. Did you book the appointment? Because Google wants that information. You know they're just trying to eat data, right? Well, they're going to start giving the, the leads to the company that's going to keep feeding them the data. So that's just a little cheat code. If you guys aren't filling the little form out after every single lead that comes in, you guys are missing an opportunity as well. Hey, can I talk for a second? No. No. <laughs> Memberships are dead. Go ahead. I mean, you guys went right into my wheelhouse, and that wasn't even where we're, but I love it. So I have to, like, I just want to share a couple of things. One, if you're not doing local service ads, please, for the love of God, start doing it. It's the cheapest way to get an ad. It's paper pay lead. So and it is increasing. We knew it was going to increase, but still it's so inexpensive. And don't try and manage it yourself if you can't fully manage that thing because the better managed it is, the better the outcome you get. But take advantage of local service ads. It's the safest play you can get at the moment, right? But How do you expand that? Can you go into, like, how do you show up more? Because that's what we've been working a lot on. Well, listen, I'll tell you one thing that we've learned. And, and, and a lot of it in this Google world is you don't read these things in black and white. But once you do it enough, you start to see patterns, right? And so in the LSA program... You may think you need to dispute every single one that comes in that wasn't technically a lead that's disputable, but don't, right? What do you think Google's in the business of doing? They're doing two things. They're giving us what? Needs. Relevant information, number one, right? We want to get it as fast as we can, but they want to make money. And they want to make a lot of money. And they want to make a lot of money from you. And they want to make a lot of money from people who are actually paying them money. So if you keep disputing leads, you're not paying them money because they got to refund you for that shit, right? So you, I'm not saying don't dispute, period. I'm just saying maybe leave a couple off of that and see how it changes your game on lead volume, okay? One little nugget That's for you. It's amazing fucking... Uh, did you One guys catch thing, that right there? One more thing I'll tell you guys is if you're using an IVR, which is nuts, an IVR means press one, press two, press three, I only do that for my cable company because they're the only one. So answer your phone on the first ring when the LSAs come in. That's the really only thing. I'm at a 92%. Most companies have never got to a 70. In fact, one third of people that get on LSA have never got a phone call. The Google guarantee is local service ads. It means I got to get a background check. My guys got to get a background check. They make sure it's a real building. They go through all these extra steps to make sure your reviews are real. So well, all I would say is what Chris is talking about. Answer your phone. Don't dispute the leads. Enter in the information like Victor said. And A1 Garage Door Service, they actually have AI to detect that I'm answering the phone A1 Garage Door Service. 
So all these little nuances for local service ads, my cost per lead is $24 per booked appointment, which is nuts because on pay-per-click, it's 130 So you just look at that. Well, Good I can job, tell Tom. you right now, I mean, we have uh, roughly like almost 700 contractors across North America and Australia at this point, all home services contractors. Average cost per lead from LSA right now is $42. Forty-two bucks. Well, circle back to what you Tommy. know what I would do for forty-two dollar leads. Yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> you know what I would do for forty-two dollar leads? I don't we, want to. We see saw it. it last night. <laughs> Anyways, we saw that. <laughs> so let's circle back to what Tommy said because this is the biggest failure point of almost every company that I go into is is the is the phone room, right? How do you answer your phones is so freaking important. How many of you guys here are outsourcing your phone service? Like someone else answers that's not your employee. After hours answering services, he's using them. Who wants to punch them in their phone? Not even face? after hours. Some of these guys are using them during hours. They're not even having people answer their phones. And all of a sudden, they got a three-minute wait time, and they can't figure out why their leads aren't working. Hey, I'm getting all these leads, but I'm not getting anything from them. You need to have a live person answering that thing immediately with a big smile on their face. Because guess what? If they're smiling on their face in the phone, it's going to come through to that customer, and that customer is going to feel warm and welcome. So make sure you guys dial down that in the process. Because if you're going to go spend money on, on uh, pay-per-click, you're gonna burn through all of your cash if that phone system, that phone answering isn't right. I'm yeah. gonna give you one, two, a quick one, right? Ready? Once a month, I want you guys to call your company and don't fucking say that you're, it's you. Secret uh, shopper? Once a month, I want you to call your company. With a British March, accent. January, February, March, April, May, it doesn't matter if it's prime July. I want you to call your company and whatever went wrong in that three, in that five, 10 minute first initial experience, I want you to go fix it. Oh, uh, so. Uh, what I do is I listen to random calls. That way it's not me calling. But what I figured out is most of you guys are like, it's just a CSR, right? It's a call center rep. They should make 15, 20 bucks an hour. Hell no, they shouldn't. Here's the deal. You, let me just tell you a simple stat. You got one person booking at 60%, one at 90%. Each of them take 20 calls a day that are bookable. And the average ticket's only $500. And let's say they work 300 days out of the year. I've done the math on this. The one is 60% lost you $940,000 that year. One CSR, only 20 calls a day at a $500 ticket average. So what I'm telling you, what I told you all earlier when I spoke is the number one thing to fix is your call center. The number one thing to do is performance pay. A great CSR for me will make 35 bucks an hour, but they've earned it. Did you hear that? Did you hear how much he's paying for a CSR, a dispatcher? Did you hear that? Most so, of you guys are paying 15, 20 bucks an hour and wondering why you're not getting booking enough leads. Or so I, was sitting, I was sitting in the hallway yesterday, and I don't know if you guys saw Ken Goodrich here at all. And he was just kind of sitting and admiring everything. I went over and started talking to Ken, and one of the conversations came up is, is the pay for the call center. And he said, if I was to focus on one thing and the one person that should be paid more is the call center. He's like, it's almost more important than your technician or your sales rep in that. Yes. House. Yes. So if you're a Rhino customer, every single phone call is listened to. I've got an 80 person team and that's your only job is listen to your phone calls. Worst job in my company, hands down. That's why he's is not to be making on that any money. Team. I feel bad for those people. <laughs> they need to get paid $35 an hour. <laughs> but we get to hear, I'm talking like, even if you're a small business, your big bit doesn't matter. They are, hit the nail on the head. The CSR is the most ignored position across yes. the board. And it's, there's high turnover. Guess why there's a lot of high turnover, too? One, you need to hold yourself accountable to hold them accountable, first off. You got to get them training. You don't just get them training once and then let it ride for six months. No, you got to keep It's all about consistency. Uh, you remember what Mike Tyson said at Rhino X? Consistency kicks determination's ass, right? Yes, sir. You got to be consistent with it with the training on them and guess what if you pay them a little bit more take away that take away that uh you know i don't make enough money like that financial fear piece of it pay them well treat them well they will stay you'll start to see your turnover decrease but i've seen thousands i mean we're listening to like five hundred thousand minutes a month some crazy ass number and i still hear from these companies what their booking rates are 26 percent, 27 percent on new on new leads new leads not overall that's bullshit 42% is kind of an average, you know, number on new business, but guaranteed, even if you spent not a dime more on anything else, no negotiations, you just spent one month 
one day listening to your own phone calls, I promise you, you're yes. going to find something Can in there listen. that you're going to be able to fix. That right there, that, that, that took it all right there. And that didn't t cost you any more money. It cost you a little bit of sweat so, equity. But I guarantee you, if you just pay a little bit more, you are not losing money. You you're are not. gaining significant revenue. Well, so do you guys, pay, do you guys have a process? Don't pay more and not get the right people. Of course. Let you me, guys, let me, I got to stand, oh, I got to stand up for this. Oh attempt. God. No, Damn the, it. Number one, hold on. the number one most ignored position in there, underpaid are your CSRs. The number two is installers. Okay. Keep it freaking simple when you're paying these people. You know how we pay a next gen? We pay them 20, 25 bucks an hour for, for answering the phone call. You know what else we do? We pay them one dollar for every book opportunity that they that we, they we that pay, they book. We, we pay nine dollars. We pay nine dollars for every book. One dollar, okay? So. so they're booking five, six, seven leads, getting paid twenty bucks, twenty five bucks an hour, and they book five, six, seven leads. Now you went up to thirty, thirty two dollars an hour. Keep it so simple where they can see like hell That's yeah, good. I booked twenty five freaking calls. No at No wonder your office has such fancy ass shoes. Thank you. So so listen to me real quick. I will book any call you give to me, but I'm really careful because if you're over 90%, you're taking calls that you probably shouldn't. So you have to have, we charge a $40, $40 service call just to show up. We'll waive that. But one of the things I say, Mr. Jones, I want to earn your business today because I know you're going to tell your friends, your neighbors, and your family when we do a five out of five service. I want to know what it's going to take. And we carry different styles of springs. Usually it's a spring call. 10,000, 30,000, and 80,000 cycle. But what you got to do is get your people hungry and let them know you're watching. And so, you know, there's a lot of great CRMs. I use Service Titan. I think Sarah's great. I think uh, House Call Pro works. Service Titan <laughs> just... <laughs> no, they're all, they're right all, there. Come on. Listen, at the end of the day, I'll tell you guys, uh, Service Titan just built something called a second chance where it dis the, it's got AI that listens to the phone call. And right after the call, it'll alert the manager if it wasn't booked and if it wasn't dispoed correctly. So the deal is insane. If I spent insane. one day, I will literally call these customers back and I'll say, listen, Miss Jones, I'm the owner of the business. And people say, dude, you're a busy guy. I will record all my calls and build a training on it. But where else could I make $400 per every five minutes? So if I do 10 calls times... My, my average ticket is $900. So 10 calls. I just made nine grand for an hour, recorded it, and built a training session out of it. Your call center is the number one area you're failing. I promise you, call center is it. So one of the things that we did, we, start, we track daily on the calls that come in. Do they book them? Do they not book them? Why do they not book them? And one of the things that we noticed a lot, we would get calls for random stuff that we don't do. So we, we just kept not taking those calls and we didn't put a process in place. And recently my GM's like, dude, we got all these calls. What's our written process for when someone calls in, they didn't mean to call us. We're starting to book people that were calling us from other shit and we're booking them on tune-ups because we put a process in place for those customers that might've called, might've clicked the wrong button or whatever it is. And we're turning them into customers. I just had a conversation over breakfast with somebody and he's like, yeah, my wife took a call for like a garage or something like that. Next thing you know, I'm out there installing a toilet because she didn't get off the phone. She decided that she's already paid $200 for that fucking lead, and that $200 is gonna get my, she's gonna get that $200 back. You guys gotta start fighting for those leads. It doesn't matter where they come from, we wanna turn them into customers. But also, as you're busy in the summertime, and you guys cannot get to every customer, would you agree? One of the biggest failures you guys make is that you tell them you're busy before you get the information. Hey, I'm booked out two weeks. Well, they won't give you the information. Get the information, put the information in your system, by the winter time, they've already forgot what company came out and helped them. Now you can go out there for a furnace tune-up. Hey, Mrs. Smith, we're, out, we're getting ready for furnace season. You can call them and try to schedule them for a furnace tune-up. They'll think you're the company that came out in the summertime. So get the data and make sure you're putting it into your system as well. Yeah, so voicemail blast. It's, it's technically illegal, so don't say this. But anyways. Um, Never mind. Don't ringless tell me about So anyways, we do, we do ringless voicemail drops. So I just acquired a company up in Santa Clarita, and they've been around for a long time. They're a plumbing company. Well, how many phone calls, how long is it going to take for all of your CSRs to call every customer and let them know what's going on? So what we use is ringless voicemail drops in the business. So I can take a ringless voicemail drop. I could pre-record it. So, hey, this is Victor with Absolute Airflow. I just wanted to let you know we have a technician in your area today. Whatever you want to say on it. You pre-record it, 
and you set it into a drip campaign. So we'll send out 100 a day or 200 a day, whatever we want it to do. You can do 100 an hour, or you can do 1,000 at one time if you want your phones to go insane. Uh, I did it one time, I messed up, and I did 1,000 at a time, and all of a sudden, because they, they get the ringless voicemail drop, they call back, and all of a sudden, my phones are going like this, going, shit, I'm like, oh, shit, I messed Guys, up. Guys, these are all nuggets for when it's shoulder season, okay? Ringless voicemail, we do the same thing, we enhance it, we do a ringless voicemail, an email blast, and a direct mail campaign, all at the same time, when it's dropping, and you can see the phones light up. These are all shoulder season nuggets that nobody told us about, right? Good job, Vic, that's amazing, bro. Yeah, I want to piggyback on two things. And what this also does is help the brand, right? It's because there's a consistency in putting your name out there over and over again. Um, you guys heard uh, Antonelli talk yesterday. Obviously, he's done a lot of incredible brands. Um, you got to do it at some point, like because that branding piece in a recession is certainly going to be your best friend. Whenever COVID hit in 2020, I remember like, I was in um, Ireland with my entire family when the president said, hey, we're banning all travel back in. I'm like, oh, shit, looks like Rhino X Ireland or Rhino Ireland's about to start up. And um, I remember thinking, like, we went through that three weeks of, like, what the hell is, is going on right now? I immediately thought and noticed as we started going into April and May and June how much brand really mattered to those companies because grant brand creates like if you got to have trust in this brand, like I can trust you. Things are already kind of crazy. So if you haven't done anything with branding, you got to do it. You know, you got to at least do, start to do something. But I want to hit on one thing that I'm super passionate about. I'm on the edge of my chair. Oh, I'm like pulling close. a Tommy. Uh, you, you wanna... So again, 15 years of helping scale a lot of HVAC plumbing companies. I'm grateful for it. It's the one thing that I love to do the most is giving back like this, like doing things like this. That's the reason this podcast exists. And here's one, again, nugget that you can do that's in your control, regardless of size. So it's hard to see, but I really want you to actually raise your hand instead of just like not raising your hand when I ask this question. But if you use an after hours answering service right now, raise your hand, please, nice and high so we can see it. I know more of you guys are using after hours answering services. There's a bunch. Now, if you want to punch those fuckers square in the face, raise your hand. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Yeah, because <laughs> here's the thing I, I get frustrated with is it's like you have to find the least suckiest one and just be okay with it, right? <laughs> yes. But there's a way to hold them accountable, right? There is a way to hold them accountable. So, you know, one thing that I'm grateful that we have done is I think it was back in like 2012, 2013, I launched an after hours answering service to try and solve that problem. Um, I'll tell you this, the service was really, really successful, but I don't know how that thing, I don't know how those things make money because I lost so much money doing it. Contractors crushed it because you can book, your booking rate is so high if you just answer your own damn phone after hours and the revenue is better it, because competition falls off, especially if it's an answering service. But I'm telling you, just what? like you listen to your own calls, you have to listen to your own calls. You have to listen to how your answering services are providing service to you. You have to. And you call them out. I know that I give my team full the full accessibility, if as long as the contractor's cool, to call your answering service for you and light them up. Because they don't give a shit about your business as much as you or your own employees, even if you're paying them, right? Those after hours answering services, you gotta check in on them because I promise you, guaranteed if you're using one right now, you are getting screwed some way, somehow. You know, uh, real quick, Chris. So I got to stand. I'm just sick of this chair. So I gave a girl named Anna. Anna's a badass. She's bilingual. I said, listen, on um, Angie and uh, Home Advisor, I'm going to pay you an extra $20 for a booked call. Everyone you take. I got her an extra cell phone. Do you think she was booking those calls? She was white on rice. You've got people in your office. You've got maybe your technician's wives. But there's an opportunity. Look, at the end of the day, why not ask somebody who's a badass in your call center if they'll take after hours calls, get them a phone, and have them do it and get them a computer. You might say, man, that's another expense. It's not an expense. Every book call, I know I'm, it's a mathematical certainty I'm going to do around $1,300, or I mean $900, or $6,000 on a door sale. One or the other, 
The fact is, because I have so much data, I know what I'm going to make on that call so I can reverse engineer. I'll even pay more than that, but I, it's getting the job done for me. So Chris is absolutely right. You, you guys should really, really, this should be the number one thing that you guys do when you go home is look into your call center. I promise you guys there's no, there's no greater thing you can do then master your call center and the way they're booking the call. My mom used to book calls in 2010 to 2012. She go, "Thank you for okay, calling a, thank you for calling a one garage door service. How can I help you?" And then yeah, she go, she go like this, "Oh my god, honey, oh no, oh you're stuck. Oh my goodness. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my best technician out there. Oh sweetie, oh my goodness. So so I showed up, I show up to the house." And they'd go, who is that lady? I'd never tell them it was my mom. And they'd go, we love your company. You should have seen. We call company after company. You were the best company. I, I always tell the story about my mom. And she'd go, oh, honey, yeah, oh, I'm from Michigan. And, like, whoa, she became whoa, their. Whoa, 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 Tommy. Whoa, relax. <laughs> Easy. So, so I would do this, and I'd show up, and I'm telling you, they were putty in my hands. The call center is so important. And they love you from their first impression of you. Then you're, they're like, they're putty when you get there. They're like, we just think you're the best company out there by the way you treat your people at the, yeah. at the call center. And if you guys don't use Yelp, and a lot of people don't like Yelp, I never get leads, right? Well, me and Ishmael crushed it on Yelp. And the reason is, is because we answer those Yelp messages within seconds. You guys don't even have a chance against me. The second that Yelp message comes in, I'm answering it. I'm getting the mask in for them. I ask them, I use their name, I use their, and get them to call me immediately. I'm taking those customers. I see some of your guys' wait times on Yelp is like 10 or 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, two days. Step your shit up. Those are leads. Yeah, so you got to have a process for Yelp leads. All right, the last 10 minutes. By the way, Tommy, you installed my garage door, so I appreciate you, buddy. And I didn't get your mom on the phone. I got you. So um, last 10 minutes we got, we're actually going to take some questions for these guys. If you guys want to. Yep. yep. Just, I'm not going to run to you. Please. I'm not going to run to you, but I'll listen and I'll repeat the question. So if you have a question for any of these guys, Whatever it is, there's an open book that said you can ask anything. Hey, don't ask what our freaking marketing. What's nope, your I just first said marketing? you can ask no, anything. Do not don't fucking ask that. This is my show, not yours. Out. What's your best marketing source? <laughs> hey, what's your best marketing source? Let's say hello. <laughs> All right, who has a question for any of these guys? Just raise your hand or stand up and yell it out. Don't be shy. My God, you have a, was it? So you want to talk about service agreements. Okay, so okay. let me tell you about All right, all right, all right. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let okay. me set it up. Let so me set it up. The, the thing behind that post, I'm going to do a quick two minutes. Can someone video point. this I'm real not going to go over it. Look, look, the thing about those membership agreements is they 99% of contractors are accounting for, for them improper, okay? You know who's pro you, 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 you know what a true MRR is? Monthly recruiting revenue? You know what that is? When there's nothing attached to it and it's, it's all profit, okay? That's what I meant by that post. Memberships are dead. They're dead. You know who's making money? Those fucking security companies charging you a monitoring fee for 20 bucks, and 20 bucks, 30, 40 bucks a month. That's true MRR, not your memberships because you got to send a technician. They got to take parts with them, gas, wear and tear, all that. By the time you account your $20 a month membership, you're losing money. That's not true MRR. That's what I meant by memberships are dead. And that's why we came up with this thermostat called Nuve. Okay, Nuve will be able to display odds on the thermostat. They'll be able to dispatch off a thermostat. You guys are going to charge a, a monitoring fee on the thermostat, on their system. That's true MRR. And that, the, the one thing that I wanted to solve with this, did you know that we were, we were, get, we were getting paid, you know, anywhere between 10 and 20x multiple of EBITDA. Okay, multiple of EBITDA. That's bullshit. We're the fucking heart of this whole contract thing. They're giving us fucking chump change for our companies. And that's what I wanted to solve. You know how much the fucking technology companies are getting paid? 100x, 50x, future revenue that doesn't even exist. And that's what I was trying to solve with the, with the new thermostat. You'll be able to dispatch out of the thermostat. You will be able to display ads on the thermostat. Hey, I got a technician in Huntington Beach. They both got two calls. We've installed 300 thermostats on there. Click this fucking button. Service needed. Service needed. Service needed. Click that fucking service button. Guess what? It attaches to your CRM. They're able to book a fucking lead on the thermostat or on their app. Cuts your fucking labor. Cuts your marketing, and you're charging a $20 monitoring fee. 
Okay? Imagine if you had 20,000 monitoring fees with no labor attached to it. That's true MRR. And that's what I meant with memberships are dead. We're all been working on the same model. This 1980 model that Ken Goodrich has been trying to innovate for 30 years. We all been working on it. We need to change the way we do things so we can get paid more on this shit. That's what I'm pissed off about. I'm not happy well, with 10, 20 X EBITDA on, on your companies. You guys should be getting paid 40, 50, 60 X on that shit and retiring just like, just like myself and Tom. I'm, I'm pretty happy with 20 times EBITDA, but um, the service <laughs> agreements, that we're doing, literally, I understand what is just saying, and obviously here's one thing that I'm innovating, I'm looking to tell the health of the garage door within the thermostat, or the, shit. <laughs> <laughs> guys, 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 before the Tommy button, gets But here's the deal, we're working closely with LiftMaster with Jones Chamberlain, here's the deal, reviews do matter more than anything, Ishmael, I've never seen anybody, like, dude, if a, if a two-star comes in and all of his managers are there, they like, Everybody. They shit their pants. Um, and Ishmael's willing to give 100% of the money back, and so am I. So reviews matter. But I'll tell you, the service agreements for me, we charge $8.95 a month. And we come out, we lubricate a just tight and everything on the door. But here's the deal. You know how much money he's losing? Well, let me just tell you this. Um, that, you know, I, I, this, hey, that's I'll, I'll tell you guys a fact here. I'm going back out there every single time we just got storage units. So we're selling storage, we're selling flooring. So we're able to cross sell, like, 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 and here's the deal. My average door sale to a member is over 8,000. And I know the average shelf life of a door. What do you think happens? Do you think that customer gets automatically flagged when they hit their useful life of the garage door? And who do you think I'm sending out there on the eighth or 10th year? I'm sending one of my best salesmen because they've had great service for the last five years. That's the difference. That's why we have service agreements. I can predict future revenue on service agreements. So this is where he's messing up, and the word he just used is service agreement. And I keep exactly. telling you guys I'm preaching it. It's a membership, right? Who here has a gym membership? Do those motherfuckers call you to come work out? But you still keep paying, okay. right? So these not a, it's not a maintenance agreement. It's a, it's a membership. If you call me and you want service, it's included in that membership. But if you don't call me, I'm not calling you on that one-year-old system, two-year-old system, three-year-old system. So you guys are thinking about it all wrong. You want to sell, let's get as many people on that membership as possible. Obviously, we want to call the ones that are going to make us the most money. But See, before, yeah, I but, disagree. I disagree. Let this me is fucking great. finish for one. This is, Here by the way, the far, by far the best panel that is. Okay. By the way. You guys, have, you guys are getting a master's, uh, a master's class in fucking business right here, okay? Motherfuckers. Anyways. <laughs> Y'all going to have to bleep a lot of shit out on this podcast. But anyways, it doesn't matter if you guys have memberships, right? Because your guys hate running tune-ups. Every one of your guys hates running tune-ups because he doesn't have a process to generate fucking money over and over and over again. Ask my guys how much they run. They, they, they love running tune-ups. We make more money on tune-ups than on repair calls, and I'll do it every single day because guess what? We're going in the front door with a smile on our face. They weren't ready. We're putting them on the market. We're taking them off the market that day. Get a process in place, and your guys will love tune-ups. Let me jump on that, okay? So when, the, when these, when these uh, uh, notices are coming on the thermostat, the customer's walls are down. The thermostat's telling them, hey, something's wrong with it. So when your technician walks in, they know they got to spend money. This fucking upselling every time your membership twice, three times a year, they're catching on to that shit. Every time you come to my house, you guys are trying to sell me something. Every fucking time. That membership motto is going away. I'm well, telling you. Well, here's the deal. I've got a whole team dedicated to service agreements only and tune-ups. They get paid hourly plus a tiny, tiny bit. They're not motivated by sales. They're motivated by customer satisfaction. But Number one. Number two is when I go back into a house and I'm not talking about air quality and I'm not talking about other things, that's a disservice to the client. You should be able to give options. You don't have to walk, talk about sales at all, but you should be talking about options for them. And if they're interested, I got three things. This is what you need to do. Here's what you should do. And if you were my mother, who I love more than any woman in the world, Bree, I love you too. But if you were my mother, here's what I'd be telling you to do. Remember this, treat people like mom and give them options. Cause if you're not giving options, you're giving ultimatums. All right, guys, let's give them a round of applause, right? 
Did you pull something out of this? I hope you at least got one thing out of it, because if you got one thing that you can actually go back and implement, then this makes all this worth it. Hit up Ishmael. He said he's going to give you some things to help you along the way, so you've got to do that part of it. And I guarantee you, that's, I mean, you, you, to put that stuff together and give it away, dude, thank you for doing that I, type of stuff. I, I'm telling you, I come to this shit. Victor's not paying me for this shit. Okay, I took two, three days out of my... Tommy, Tommy's not getting paid. Tommy didn't get me... Dude, we do this. We do this because we genuinely, genuinely enjoy helping you guys. Okay? There's nothing to it attached to it. We genuinely want to help you guys. I've been in your spots already. I, I know what it feels like to not know if it's I'm going to make payroll in the next couple of weeks. I know how it feels like to fucking look at a credit card and be like, fuck, man, how am I going to pay it to be able to pay that equipment? I need to call my vendor to tell him to hold off on that charge. I've been in that fucking situation seven years ago. OK, I just sold my company for over 200 million dollars, but I was in your fucking shoes seven years ago. OK, it's still fresh in my mind how I felt fucking Telling the installers like, hey man, can you guys can you guys hold up? <laughs> uh, cash the checks on Monday. <laughs> I know, dude. I've I've had those th I've had those conversations, man. It sucks. It sucks, but it was because I I didn't educate myself on financing. I didn't educate myself on knowing how to read a P and L statement or, or 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 learning how to fucking adjust a balance sheet. I didn't educate myself. So I'm telling you, educate yourself. Hire the people, man. Christiana hey. from Rhino. And Let's hear it for Rhino and Chris. And <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. All that stuff that Ishmael just talked about is the reason why I do all of this. Anybody that's been to my training and been through this with me, you guys know what I'm about. I'm trying to help you guys as much as possible. I've had conversations with almost every single person in this room. I shook your hand. The reason I want to is I want you guys to know you are special, and every single one of you guys matters, and it means a lot that you guys are here for me. And this, the profit rocket thing, I'm not making much money off it. I took my brain and Michelle's brain and I fucking gave you guys everything. Uh, dude, Go check hey, it out hey, at the Hey, booth. Victor, can I thank you, man? Can, can Victor stand up, honestly? Look, Victor didn't make money on this shit, okay? Do you understand? Victor didn't make money, okay? Can all you guys stand up, please? Honestly, because this is like, th this guy needs to get, this guy needs to get recognized. He didn't make money on this shit, number one. Number two, he's been sober for three fucking months. Yeah. The next generation of contractors, we're promoting God, we're promoting sobriety, we're promoting innovation. That's Victor right here, man. So give him a round of applause. Yeah, let's go. So I'll finish with this, because we're already running a little bit late. So one, thank you for mentioning the sobriety thing. That's fucking awesome, man. Good job, congratulations. Listen. The whole reason to the point exists is to give back to the industry that I love so much. These guys coming out and doing this because they love you. Ishmael loves doing this as much as he loves showing his shoes on social media. Hey, the, so, the shoes, the shoe <laughs> game's stupid though. You, gotta, listen, you guys gotta, you guys gotta say something to. But listen, again, you have a lot of great talent here. I've done a lot of these things, and 95% of the people who come to these things walk away and do nothing with what they've got. I heard Brad Lee talking about it yesterday. Be the five percenters that go back and actually implement something. At least try. At least try to implement something. You got all these great people here. You got White Hepworth. He's up next. White's built an amazing company. Amazing. I've been able to go up there and see his operations, see how they function. If you get the opportunity to do that, I guarantee you all you can do is go ask him. Ask why he'll, he'll have you come up there and visit his shop and you will be blown away. Go but I appreciate all you guys. You don't got to do everything, but you got to do something. No, zero. Yay. Let's go. Listeners, thank you so much again for listening to this podcast week after week. We are extremely grateful. Again, the whole purpose of this podcast is to give back to the home services industry that we love so much, whether you're a rhino or not. We really, really appreciate all the subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go in and subscribe and you'll get all the episodes sent to you automatically weekly. Also, we have really enjoyed your feedback. Uh, it's so meaningful for us when we get to read the nice comments that you guys put. So keep doing that. And if you don't know how to do it, Here's what you got to do. You search for To The Point Home Services on Apple Podcasts. You click on our profile, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and hit write a review. And be honest and share your story and how the podcast has impacted you and your business. Thanks again from the bottom of our hearts at To The Point Home Services Podcast. We appreciate you.